Hey, what's going on? Justin back here with the second part of using reverb like a pro. So in the first one, we talked about using the pre-delay and timing it out with the track so that it sits in time and in rhythm with, with the song, but also sits a little bit behind the vocal so the vocal can stand out um, and be a little bit more clear, I guess you could say. So the next step is to manipulate the return of the reverb. So after we add the reverb, now we're going to start adding some processing to the reverb itself so that when it gets returned back to the track, um, it doesn't sound too reverby, if that makes any sense. So the first thing I do is I crank the reverb up as high as I can because remember we're trying to turn it up as, so that we can hear it. A little bit better so it's more audible and then we make some crazy wild adjustments and then after we pull it back and then we fine-tune those adjustments um, so anyways I'd solo this vocal here and we'll listen to the reverb so the first thing I do is I, I cut all the bottom frequencies out of the reverb so that it's not muddying up the song and then I'm listening for the areas that I don't want in that reverb so the first thing I'm listening for is where is it competing with the lead vocals themselves? So where do the vocals stand out the most? What frequency stands out? And whatever frequency that is, I got to cut that in the reverb. So most people would probably go to the, the lead vocal, grab an EQ, boost it all the way up, and start sweeping around to find the frequency I like. But I find that kind of um, hazardous in the mixing process. And it's kind of like you want to focus on the good stuff and you don't want to focus too much on the bad stuff, if that makes any sense, when, especially when you're finding problem frequencies. So what I'm doing is I'm listening to the lead vocal and I'm listening to it and I'm listening to it the way it sits in the track. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cut the reverb where that competes with the vocal. So I'm focusing solely on the lead vocal as I'm cutting the reverb. So even though you're manipulating the reverb, you don't want to focus on the reverb. You want to focus on the vocal itself. Then once I get that, then um, sometimes there's a hollow sound in, in reverbs. And what I also try to do is I try to find that and also cut that. So this is sort of what it would look like. Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. I thought that I was the one for her and maybe I'm crazy. This was no concern Back when I believed That I was sent to her And thought that she was sent to me Not even one week away from her And I'm going crazy Okay, so for the first part of getting the reverb out of the way of the vocal, I think that sounds in, in the ballpark. I mean, again, we only have limited time, so I can't sit here for 20 minutes trying to figure it out. But that's in the ballpark, so I'm going to leave that for now. And then what I'm trying to do now is get that hollow frequency out of the way. Again, in this situation, I'd probably focus more on the reverb just because I want to get the hollowness out of the reverb. But for that last one, I was focusing solely on the vocal and where it eventually popped out when I cut it. So now let's get rid of that hollow sound. Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. I thought that I was the one for her and maybe I'm crazy Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy Okay, I think that's sort of in the ballpark so anyways, you're probably looking at this again and be like, oh my God, that's so extreme. But you also have to remember that it's the reverb return. So this is something that's almost has no importance or significance in the song whatsoever. It's literally background noise. So we don't have to be so um, fixated on how we're EQing and stuff like that. Because with the vocals, if you were to do an EQ like this, then maybe it would be a little bit more extreme. It would take away from the natural sound. But... But also in this situation right now, it is a little bit extreme. So what I usually do is I bring them back up to to zero. Then I start blending the reverb back into the mix to where it sits nicely. And then I'll start to cut those frequencies out. So this is sort of what it would look like. Not even one week away from her. Okay, 
so that seems like a level that seems pretty decent. Um, so now what I'm going to start doing is I have the, the areas that I want to cut based on the last um, thing that I did uh, with cutting the reverb at an extreme level. So now I'm going to slowly start cutting it out and then I'll stop once I feel like the reverb starts to disappear a little bit into the track. Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. crazy. I thought that I was the one for her and maybe I'm crazy. crazy. This was no concern back when I believed that I was sent to her and thought that she was sent to me. Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. crazy. I thought that I was the one for her and maybe I'm crazy. crazy. This was no concern back when I believed that I was sent to her and thought that she was sent to me. All right. So. The vocals are completely untreated right now as far as um, compression, EQ, and everything. So there is some problems in the lower register of the vocals, and that's what's kind of making the reverb stick out a little bit more in those areas. But that being said, the way it sounds right now, it sounds actually pretty good. So I would leave it at that. And then once I kind of get the reverb where it's sitting in that position... Now what you can do to kind of feather it out a little bit, if that makes any sense, almost like your, um, uh, what's the description? I guess like if you were to kind of like fog up a glass a little bit, so you can't really see clearly through the glass. You're just trying to, um, to make the reverb even more felt as opposed to being heard. What you could do is you could take something like a stereo imaging plug-in, or we could do, let's say, a flanger. So let's actually solo the reverb. Okay, it's just a little subtlety, so it kind of makes the reverb swoosh around a little bit, so it's not it's not so constant. So it, it, it doesn't allow your ear time to kind of find it and grab it, so it just helps it sit a little bit more in the back. Not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. crazy. I thought that I was the one for her. all right so i'm thinking it sounds pretty good um that's just one trick there's so many different things you can do on the on the effects returns but what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to leave the reverb in and then i'm going to mute it and then i'll bring it back in and then um, you'll see the kind of the difference that it makes and hopefully the reverb is not too heard because again we want it there so you can feel it but you don't we don't really want to hear it that much so let's try it again not even one week away from her and I'm going crazy. crazy I thought that I was the one for her and maybe I'm crazy. crazy This was no concern back when I believed that I was sent to her So again, as soon as we took out the reverb, it just it felt like something was missing Again, I just chalked this up pretty quickly. I think it sounds pretty decent the way it is, but obviously I would spend a little bit more time fine-tuning it just to make sure that it sits a little bit better in the track. But anyways, that's just to give you some ideas. Hopefully you learned something from that, and I'll catch you in the next video.